So let's start with a, a quick introduction. Um, I'm going to briefly introduce myself and present the agenda for today's session. Um, so my name is Laurent. Um, I'm from France, but I live in, uh, in Portugal. Uh, my background is in cybersecurity. I've been in that field for nearly 20 years now. Um, I've been doing like many different, uh, I mean, uh, working in different domains in cybersecurity. Uh, started working with SOC, uh, so security operation centers. I did some consulting, mostly for financial services, but also different uh, industries. Um, public sector. So I had like mix of uh, technical uh, jobs and sometimes I moved to positions more related to um, governance, uh, risk and compliance. Uh, so today I'm back to doing stuff more technical. Um, a great discovery has been the cloud computing. Um, I first heard about it nearly 10 years ago. Uh, and at that time it was quite scary for like most of the security folks. We were like scared about cloud. It looks uh, um, risky and I think we were quite uh, risk averse in general. And no, I really um, believe like cloud is helping, is a, is a plus for security. Um, and I've been focusing on AWS cloud over the past uh, five years. Um, and today I'm working more and more in the cloud in AWS uh, um, ecosystem. Uh, so I'm doing AWS architecture, I'm doing stuff related to security in AWS, which is closer to my um, original background. Um, and I work as a freelancer, uh, doing consulting for startups, uh, uh, like uh, some fintech, some SaaS providers. I met a lot of my customers over the past year uh, using uh, a market, I mean, uh, AWS created a um, a marketplace platform for freelancer, which is called AWS IQ. Um, and it's a very interesting way to find new leads. Um, and uh, the customers on these platforms are uh, mostly startups. So we're looking for like very like ad hoc support or part-time support from AWS experts. So it's been a, yeah, it's been a place uh, where I, um, find interesting customers to work with. Um, and that's like nearly half of my uh, professional activity. The rest of the time in my job, I'm uh, working as an instructor. Um, so I'm working on platforms like Secrecy, Secrecy, sorry. Um, I'm mentoring some students who want to, um, you know, like they come from non-tech jobs and they want to turn their career into cybersecurity or AWS cloud. So I'm mentoring them and I'm also giving uh, lectures for uh, different uh, university programs. Uh, but my sound like a lot, but it's a lot of small projects. So uh, I still have a lot of time for my, enough time for personal time for myself. Uh, that's very much about it, uh, about my background. And uh, today I'm, very happy to do my third Securezai webinar, uh, still on AWS security. Uh, I'm way less scared than the previous ones. <laughs> the first uh, webinar, I was uh, terrified. The second one, a lot less. And I uh, know it feels a bit more relaxed. So that's uh, also uh, good <laughs> for, uh, for me. Uh, the first webinar was about building a secure multi-tenant environment on AWS. Uh, it's still available on Secrezai as a replay. And the second one, uh, which was about a month ago, was about performing a security review on uh, an AWS environment. So uh, today for the third one, again, we're going to talk about infrastructure as code for uh, se uh, security. And I found this domain very fascinating. Uh, because as someone who worked before the cloud era, so, you know, I was like racking servers and firewalls in data centers with all the, the physical stuff and it was very slow. Uh, but today with the cloud, I'm, I'm, I'm still, I mean, I'm truly fascinated um, by the level of uh, automation that's, uh, that we can find in cloud computing. And in particular, infrastructure as code is, uh, is something that I find very interesting. Um, I was... Um, I found it magic at the beginning when I discovered this, uh, this um, domain. Um, the, the possibilities with automation and uh, infrastructure as code, I mean, sometimes they seem like uh, endless to me because there is always something uh, 
evolving there. And I'm, I'm very excited to, uh, to keep exploring this, uh, this field. Uh, it's very innovative. So that's about, uh, that's about me. Uh, the agenda for today's session. Um, so we're going to talk about these different topics. So first of all, we're going to uh, compare um, manual cloud management and programmatic cloud management. What is it? What are the differences? Uh, and how it relates to infrastructure as code? Um, what are the benefits of using infrastructure as code, especially from a security perspective? Um, because we look at it mostly from a security lens. Uh, what are the best security, some of the best security practices when you work with um, infrastructure as code or when you work with developers or architects who build stuff using infrastructure as code, what you need to look at. Um, then we're going to talk about uh, automating security testing of your uh, infrastructure when you work with infrastructure as code. There's a lot of great things we can do to automate security as much as possible. Uh, using a CI/CD approach, and uh, yeah, um, some organization have moved to the paradigm where they automate everything. They use infrastructure as code for everything. They never put like human hands in the um, cloud environment. So we're going to see what are the benefits of having this approach, what it means, and um, if it's a good fit or not for different type of organization. So that's the topics we're going to cover uh, right now. So without further ado, let's uh, just get started now with the first topic. So we're going to look into uh, automating infrastructure um, deployment. So um, what is it? Um, they are, when it comes to managing cloud resources in the AWS cloud or in other uh, main public cloud services, there are two main approaches uh, you can use. There is the manual and the programmatic uh, approach. The, the manual management involves configuring resources to the AWS console or the command line. So you do the stuff manually, uh, you click with your mouse or you type some commands. Um, this approach is usually how we start with AWS and how like developers start and um, um, cloud engineers, etc. Uh, I'm still using it a lot, um, but it's, it's useful for small scale deployments, or if you are new to the cloud, uh, you can make quick changes to existing resources by modifying the settings directly in the console or in the command line interface. However, this um, manual management can become time uh, consuming if you want to do like 100 times the same change to resources, you will need to click 100 times to the same uh, sequences. Um, so, yeah, you may want to automate this. And also manual management is more error prone uh, because human mistakes are more common uh, using this approach. So as the number of resources and complexity of the infrastructure increases in the environment, manual management becomes more and more, um, how to say, yeah, has more and more uh, pitfalls basically. Um, the other approach is programmatic management. So programmatic management on the other end involve using uh, infrastructure as code uh, tools um, such as uh, AWS CloudFormation, Terraform, AWS CDK. We're going to talk about these tools a little bit more. Um, they are used to automate uh, the deployment and configuration of cloud resources. So instead of having a human doing the stuff on the graphical interface, the console or the command line interface, you are going to uh, make the changes um, using um, automation. So infrastructure as code is, uh, uh, yeah, allows the teams to define uh, like their infrastructure as a code, that's why we call it like this. Uh, and as a code, it can be version, it can be tested, it can be deployed. Uh, you can put it in, it can be deployed uh, programmatic, programmatically, sorry. Um, you can uh, get this um, infrastructure as code uh, template in a, a repository, and you can use all the cool features that you uh, use when you work with code. So it's a great evolution. 